Hi friends, this is Peter Swart from Grace Covenant Ministries and uh, on this Christmas day I want to say to you happy holidays and may you and your family have a wonderful day and 2017 is just around the corner and may all the Father's plans and purpose and destiny that they have for you come in fulfillment in this coming year. I'm looking forward to 2017 and we have such a lot of things that we are planning for this new year and uh, we're going to have a healing school in Wallaceburg, Ontario uh, 13 and 14 of January, end of January I'm in Kentucky and the program begin to fill up and then in uh, June, uh, June, excuse me, in July we are going to Uganda with an outreach and we are taking about 20 to 30 people with us. I don't think we can take more than 30 and um, we are going to reach out and have a gospel crusade in the evenings and in the mornings we're going to teach uh, the pastors in that community the message of grace and I'm so looking forward to that. So join us in that. If you can go with us to Uganda, if you, if the Lord put on your heart to support it, we will put up a GoFundMe um, page in the new year. So uh, God bless you and uh, I'm looking forward to this new year. Now today I want to share with you on the message of peace and I want to read to you uh, just as Jesus uh, was born, the shepherds were together in the field and the angels appeared to them and, um, and suddenly the Bible say in Luke 2 verse 13 and 14 it says and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men now we all know that since Jesus is born there was no peace on earth we know that there were wars rumors of wars we know that there was all kinds of destruction and trouble in the world uh, since Jesus is born so what does he really mean by peace peace on earth uh, so peace what does peace really mean peace in reality means to be made whole to be have absolute um, tranquility to be in uh, a place of absolute harmony with God and that's why peace is such an important um, uh, fruit of the spirit that me and you need to understand. Now under the old covenant people have experienced God's power, they have experienced healing, they have experienced miracles, miraculous things, but there's one thing that they have never experienced and that was peace. Now the Jewish cult, in the Jewish culture they would say to one another when they greet one another uh, they would say Shalom which means also to be made whole but they were not, they, they, they never experienced true peace until Jesus came. Now what does peace mean when they say peace on earth? It got nothing to do with external things. It got nothing to do with, with that which is going on in the natural. Nothing to do with um, peace in countries where the government bring peace uh, to people. That can maybe be true but what it says here in this passage it means to make us whole that we can have peace in us and that's why Jesus was born. Jesus came um, in the first place to represent who the Father really is, showing us that the Father is love. He says if you've seen me you've seen the Father therefore Jesus never condemned, He never judged, He ex received the sinner just where He is, He healed the people, He provided for the people and He absolutely represent the, the, the absolute true in the image of the Father to, to mankind. But Jesus also went to the cross and man who was broken since the fall of Adam, man was broken, man was uh, corrupted, man's heart was corrupted, man's thinking was corrupted, uh, death was reigning in man's mind and in his heart and uh, therefore trouble was uh, 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 continuously reigning in the heart of man. So Jesus came and he took that man, Adam, that old nature, and he took it to the cross and he killed it and he rose from the dead 
on the third day and he came out one new man and everyone who believes in him receive his nature and that includes peace so Jesus brought peace and the next verse that, that I want to read to you here um, uh, is in um, John 14 verse 27 just before Jesus died he was teaching his disciples I believe the last teachings he's giving them in John 14 15 16 17 was the prayer and then he was arrested and here he speak to his disciples and he's encouraging them and he say in John 14 27 he say Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. So Jesus came and he gave us peace and he says, and not as the world um, uh, uh, gives you. I want to say to you today that there are so many self-help programs out there uh, that wants to help people to get peace. There is so many... Um, uh, 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 religious groups out there that promise peace but not one of them can provide peace and Jesus is the only one who can provide peace now um, what is interesting here is is that on the end of the day uh, uh, you need to be made whole and, uh, and, and and peace is a heart condition if you can understand that peace is a heart condition it's if your heart is established in rest and in peace this is when the Spirit of God begin to flow through you and begin to work through you and begin to bring guidance and you become sensitive to the voice of God and the voice of Jesus Christ uh, and the Holy Spirit and I, I want to read to you one pass, a passage here in the Bible uh, in that's in Philippians 4 verse 6 and 7 and he say here, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, what I want to show you out of that is that, that the, the, the father say, be anxious for nothing. But if you have a, a troubled situation, come to him by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. And if you study those words in the Greek, um, then it really means, uh, supplication really means that I um, begin to take hold of what Jesus has already done uh, on the cross. I begin to take hold of that. I begin to receive meditate on on what he has done on the cross 2000 years ago and then I go into thanksgiving and then the God, peace of God that surpasses all understanding so I want to encourage you don't you think that'll be amazing to be in a place that you have peace that surpasses all understanding and then he says it will guard your heart um, it will guard your heart and mind uh, through Jesus through Christ Jesus now it's another verse in the Bible and that's in Proverbs 4 verse 23 where it says excuse me verse 20 right down to 23 you read that passage he says there above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life or it's the boundaries of your life so it seems that under the new covenant that peace is what is guard that is going to guard our hearts it's protecting our hearts so if we have peace in our hearts it is then the fountain is open and God begin to flow through us and we begin to hear his voice and we are guided by his spirit the next verse that I want to give to you is um, uh, uh, that I want to read to you out of the Bible uh, just to show you that um, Peace is, is, is so important. But before I read that to you, Francois de Thuy in his, in his uh, Mirror Bible made this statement and he says, Peace is a place of unhindered enjoyment of friendship beyond guilt, suspicion, blame or inferiority. The word irene in the Greek means to join or to dovetail or, or a dovetail joint in carpentry. So if we have peace, 
then we are like a dovetail joint with God. Uh, what I love of Philippians is that he said, the God of peace will guard our hearts. So if we have peace, then God guard our hearts and we are like a dovetail joined with him. And what I love of what he say here is there is no suspicion in this relationship. Uh, there is no blame, no inferiority in this relationship. It's a friendship beyond guilt. And I love that. If you have peace in your heart, then it means there's no suspicion, there's no blame, there is no guilt, there is no inferiority in a heart that is established in peace. And it's so important that me and you understand that. Now, in Romans 10, before I read that to you, in verse 17, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Now, that, that the original scriptures or the original scripture actually say faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of Christ. Now, um, if you go up to verse 10, then he say there that with the heart we believe unto righteousness. So it's so important that me and you see that faith is a heart condition. Uh, faith uh, 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 is working in our hearts and through our hearts. And your heart is the center and source of your whole being. This is where all your emotions and your thoughts and your plans and beliefs come together. And that's why it's so important to have peace in your heart. And many people think that the heart is the born again part of your being. It's not. You are a spirit and your heart. That's why Ezekiel say, I will give you a new spirit and I will take the heart of stone out of you. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And that word flesh in the Greek or excuse me, in the original Hebrew is actually naked. So he says, I will give you a naked heart and naked speaks of innocence. So he says, I will take the heart of stone out of you, which is the law, which is performance, which is labor, toiling. Uh, that's the heart that we have created, that is being created through the knowledge of the, uh, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that came through Adam. And that, that heart is a hardened heart. It represents the law which the law was written on stone. So he says, I will take that heart of stone out of you and I will give you an innocent heart. So you have a spirit. God give you a new spirit and they replace your heart. He bring a transformation in your heart from hardness to innocence. And once that happened, me and you have peace and we have faith. Now, um, in Hebrews, I want to, uh, excuse me, in Romans, where people so misjudge that they say faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And many people take any word out of the Bible. Um, you can't take um, a word out of the Bible that is, uh, 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 that is not filtered through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And that's why I love to use the illustration that the cross is like a filter. Uh, if you have a swimming pool, then you have a filter that you that you purify the water so the water will go the dirty water will go on the in through the, on the one side of the filter on the other side the, the pure water will come out or the clean water will come out and that's the same uh, jesus have taken everything out of the old covenant that was negative and that was in was bondage and that was uh, uh, cursed and he brought it through the cross so the dirty part of the old covenant came through the cross and the pure part came out on the other side. Um, he became sin so that we can be righteous. He became the curse so that we can be blessed. He became poor so that we can be rich. He became sick so that we can be healed. So all those things come through the cross. So if you take a word, you can't just take a word. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what word is it? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You have to ask yourself the question, what word is it that me and you need to hear? So let's, let's look at, because people just read from verse uh, 17, but you have to read from verse 16 here. Uh, excuse me, uh, verse 15, he says, And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. 
but they have not obeyed or or, ha, or be obedient to the faith the gospel for Isaiah say Lord who has believed our report for then faith comes by hearing and hearing the what hearing the gospel of peace the glad tidings of good things so the gospel of peace and the glad tidings of good things is what me and you need to hear so that's what what brings faith faith comes that way to you because the gospel reveals how good god is how much he loves you and that is establishing trust and faith in your heart and that is what brings the heart from stone to rest from performance based labor toiling because most of us our hearts were programmed to labor and toil uh, to get God to bless us, to not be rejected, to have acceptance in this world, have acceptance from God. But now God's showing us through the gospel that we have already been accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ. That He loved us even before we have sinned the first time. He loved us during the time that we have been sinned. And He never gave up on us, on, on us and He has forgiven us past, present and future. And once we hear that gospel, it brings peace to the heart. It transforms the heart from, from performance-based Christianity where I try to be perfect and I relax, there come rest. I, I establish my heart in rest and peace. Now, how do you establish your heart in rest and in peace? When you, when you hear the finished work of Jesus Christ, when you hear that the work is done, that you don't have to perform to be righteous anymore or to be accepted by God. That you are already being made righteous through the finished work of Jesus Christ. That you've already been forgiven past, present and future through the finished work of Jesus Christ. When he said on that cross, it's finished. He dealt with all our sins, the curse and everything. Once you begin to hear that, the heart is transformed from labors and toiling and come to peace. So peace means that my heart rests in what God has already done. And that is so beautiful. Um, if you go with me to another verse in the Bible um, that, I, that I want to read to you. Uh, uh, in Rome, it says in Romans 4 verse 25 is the very last verse in Romans 4. And it says there, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. What does it mean to be justified? Under the old covenant, justification or righteousness, the word justification and righteousness is the same meaning, means the, the beam that, that balances scale. Um, so with our good works, we had to balance the scale out uh, under the old covenant, under the law. But under the new covenant, the word righteousness means where two beings find equal likeness in one another. Therefore, we are transformed from the same Im uh, transformed into the same image of Jesus Christ. Um, and so we have been made righteous. So Jesus right now is absolutely righteous therefore we are as, as righteous as he it means that God under the new covenant it's not me trying to be righteous anymore God made me righteous I have a righteous nature now I've been justified another word that I love to use here and I think it's a stronger word than them all is the word innocence because the resurrection of Jesus Christ declared our innocence we have been made innocent innocent through the finished work of Jesus Christ. We stand before God just as if we have never sinned. We are as innocent as little children before our Father. And that's the good news. But he goes on there, Paul, and what I love what he is saying here in Romans 5, he says, therefore, having been justified by faith or declared righteous or declared innocent by faith, not by works, by faith. Faith comes by hearing. And when I hear this good news, and I hear that He did it for me personally, I begin to rest and by faith I realize I am now righteous. I am in right standing with God. There is nothing between me and God, even if I fail. Um, there is nothing that can separate me from His love. I'm inseparable from His love and peace. 
Why? Because Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father and we are in Him. We are included in Him because we are seated with Him in and the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says, as He is, so we are in this world. And why is it important that Jesus has to sit on the right hand of the Father? Simply because He keeps the covenant. Uh, we don't keep the covenant. Covenant means under the old covenant, I, if I found out you are a wealthy, rich man with lots of resources, I'm going to try to get in a covenant with you and I will bring my resources and my wisdom and uh, my knowledge that I have and the two of us go into covenant and it's a stronger bond and we can ma and make a bigger impact. In, in the world, whether it's business, whether it is we go to war or uh, uh, influence in life. And here we are now through Jesus Christ. But under the old covenant, if you fail in that covenant, they hunt you down and they kill you. But under this new covenant, Jesus already died. <laughs> And he rose from the dead. He died in our place. And he rose from the dead. And he seated on the right hand of the Father. And he keep this covenant even though we fail. He keep this covenant for eternity. You will have to have the power to go into heaven, kill Jesus and remove him from the throne if you want to break this covenant. Nobody can break this covenant anymore. That's why Jesus said, this is the New Testament in my blood he shed his blood for this covenant and he sealed it for eternity and that's why me and you can have peace today that even though we fail we are still in covenant with god and covenant means to be made one you have like two people who marry you have become one you are now joined together and that's where that peace come in. You are like a dovetail uh, in carpentry. You are joined to God now, right now. And there is nothing that can separate you from that covenant. Not even your sins, not even your weaknesses. Yes, sins have consequences. We all understand that. But God's grace even is, is overpowering that. And by that I'm not telling you go and live destructive. I don't believe that people or children of God that have the nature of in God want to do bad things or want to have a destructive living. Because the Spirit of God is working in you. And people have destructive living simply because of wrong beliefs that have come into their hearts because of things that happen in life but you know what God is bigger than this and God is greater than this and you've started the good work in your life and he will complete it wow that's the new covenant we are in such a better position so if I read further on here listen to this he say therefore being justified by faith or declared innocent by faith we have peace with God isn't that beautiful? Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through Him, not through ourselves. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Isn't that good news, people? Wow! Peace on earth and goodwill to men. We are sharing in that peace now. Why? Because we have found the truth in Christ. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. This is so beautiful. This is the gospel. What is the gospel all about on the end of the day? Did you be one with God? Did you live in, did you understand what it means to be in peace and have peace in your heart? That's what the good news is all about. Bring peace to you. And when you are in peace, you are joined to God. You are sensitive to his voice. He's guiding you. I'm, I'm surprised in this last two, three months how he guide me, how he show me things, simple things. Um, uh, uh, and sometimes I think it's not significant and then it is very significant because God used the foolish things of this world sometimes to teach us something. I want to tell you this, this small little um, uh, uh, testimony. I, I preach somewhere in the United States. I don't want to really let you know who it is and where it is. But um, I minister afterwards um, to people. Now, lately people attack this thing that people run after all prophets and stuff like that. I don't have an issue with that. Um, here's what I want to say to you today is it's not good for you to run after every prophet to get another word. 
normally most of the time prophecy is the confirmation of what, what God has already said to you. It is more important for you to hear God's voice yourself because if I give, say something to you, it can be second-hand information. Uh, but first-hand information is to hear God's voice for yourself and that is amazing. But I will never stop prophesying because it is such an important gift. Paul said it's better to prophesy. And I w I've seen the results of it. I've seen things happen. And sometimes it's so we think it's so ins insignificant. Now, I was at this place and um, this man was sitting there next to his wife. And, and I say to him, and I have this vision of a, that he have a, a bag of sweets in his hand. And he gave the sweets away. And I thought, this is so stupid, Father. Can't you give me something better than this? And... Um, but I was obedient and say it to him. And, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, uh, I thought, he, he didn't respond to it. And I thought, this is crazy. And I keep on prophesying to people. And afterwards, he came to me. I want to tell you this story. He said, every week I have money that I call sweet money that me and my wife put on the side. And I have decided this morning, the father said to me, give the sweet money to Peter. But I said, I will give you only half of the sweet money. But then, then the father said to me, give him all the sweet money. And I said, no, I will give him half of the sweet money. And when I prophesied over him, he knew exactly that it was God speaking to him. I didn't know nothing about that. And I thought it was so insignificant, but it was huge. Because he said to me, then he realized that he can't get away from the Holy Spirit. And the father wants him to give that all that money away to me and, 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 and it's just just God's provision and, and small little things that we sometimes think God speak in the most um, uh, uh, um, foolish ways sometimes we think it's foolish but it's not and and then it have such huge results on the end of the day and I want to encourage you with that because if you have peace in your heart he will guide you with that um, there's so many things that I can tell you around words of knowledge and words of wisdom and prophecy that, that the Father have done in this last year in people's lives. And therefore, I want to encourage you to keep on prophesying. But remember, it's more important to hear God's voice for yourself. Um, the next verse that I, 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 the next thing that I want to, to share with you here is in, in, in Isaiah 40, verse 1 and 2. And this is what he says here. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended and that her iniquity is pardoned. For she have received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now that word double in the Greek means manifold. Uh, in, uh, excuse me, in the Hebrews means, means manifold. It's the manifold grace of God. It's the manifold mercy of God. So he said, speak comfort to my people. Tell her that the war, that her warfare is over. I want to say to you, the war, what is the real war that man had for ages? It was the war that was raging in his heart because he did not have peace. It was the trouble that was in his heart. It was the labor, the toiling, the fact that his heart was not at rest and at peace. And that was the war that man was in for ages. And here comes Jesus. And when he was born, it was declared into the earth, peace on earth and goodwill to men. And Jesus says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Not, not, do not let your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. And I want to encourage you with this and say the war is over. Jesus finished that war. He stripped the enemy of his power that brought that, that, that belief system to your heart that you have to perform and that you have to, to, to live up to a standard. I want to say to you this morning, do not be thrown off from the finished work of, 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 that came through the death and res resurrection of Jesus Christ. The war is over. The enemy is defeated. Accusation and condemnation is being made void and invalid. You have been made whole and redeemed. You already have peace. You already have peace from God. You already have peace in your spirit. 
the very Holy Spirit that can impart that peace to your heart and bring transformation to your heart, bringing it from labor and toiling and frustrations and annoyances into peace is dwelling in you. You already have it. So it's only one thing that needs to happen. And let me read that to you. And I'm closing down with this. And um, it, uh, I hope on this Christmas day it's encouraged you. Say, listen to what Paul say in Romans 8. And I close down with this passage. He said, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh and those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so there's your answer your spirit is created in the image of jesus christ the bible say as he is so we are in this world is jesus right now fearful troubled anxious working laboring no he's seated on the right hand of the father he have the absolute peace that that surpasses all understanding so as he is so we are in this world you have his peace in your spirit right now in your spirit is everything that you need to live the life this life to its fullest to overcome sickness to overcome sin to overcome uh, trouble to overcome the, anything in this life that can come against you relationship problems doesn't matter what it is you right now inside of you you have already it is already provided for you to live in that place so because you have been declared righteous and innocent you don't have to work up to become to try to become righteous anymore you have been declared you have been made righteous Therefore, the Bible says, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So if you understand today that you have received the righteousness or the innocence that is in Jesus Christ through His grace as a free gift, you will begin to reign. That means your heart will be in peace and the very fullness of God, everything that you need. The Bible say in Philip Philemon 6, the Bible say that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So it's already deposited in you. What needs to happen? Set your mind on your spirit, your spirit man that's complete, perfect, righteous. That's who you are. Set your mind and it will bring life and peace to your whole being. It will establish your heart in peace. And that's what I want to leave with you today on this Christmas day, that Jesus had brought peace to mankind. And you can live in that state of peace every day of your life. It's not something that you work for. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It just manifests. Why? Because you know that you have been made righteous, declared innocent. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.